Many, many years ago, there lived a king and a queen. And they had three beautiful daughters, three young princesses. And the king and queen loved these girls from the bottom of their heart. But one day, the queen took poorly. She became very, very ill. She took to her bed and she couldn't eat and she couldn't sleep, she couldn't drink. And much as everybody tried anything they could think of, the Queen passed away and left this world. For the King was devastated to lose his Queen, his wife. And the three princesses, they were heartbroken and bereft to lose their kind, loving mother, the Queen. But the king gathered the girls together and he said, look you, one day I too will die and when I do I will go to heaven and I will join your mother. But until that time, I promise you that I will try to be the best daddy that any daddy could. And indeed, he was a kind, loving, thoughtful father and a very kind, loving, thoughtful ruler much adored by all of the people. But as time went by, the king became bothered. He became bothered that he didn't have a son. He didn't have a son, an heir, to take over from him when he died. He had three daughters. Which of them would be the best to rule the kingdom? He didn't want any arguments or any squabbles when he died. And he didn't feel that he really knew them very well because he was so busy with all his duties being a ruler and with all his pastimes of hunting and of fishing. And so he gathered together his ministers and his cooks and he said that he wanted to have an evening with his daughters. But he had something important to ask them. And so it was all of the servants and all of the important ministers left the castle and the king gathered with his daughters in the throne room with a roaring fire. And he said, look you girls, he said, one day, he said, I will die and I will go to meet your mother in heaven. But the girls were upset at this and they said, no, no, daddy, we don't want you to die. He said, look, look, he said, one thing is for certain. We're born and we die. And we can't escape from that. And one day, surely, I will die. And listen. When I die, one of you will rule this kingdom after me and I want you to do it well and I want to know which of you will be the best to take this task and I don't want any arguing or any squabbling. So tell me now. And he turned to the eldest and he said, How much do you love your daddy the king? Oh, daddy, she said, Well, I love you more than diamonds. I love you more than blue sapphires and green emeralds and red rubies. Very well, said the king, and he stroked his daughter's long, raven black hair. You love your daddy very much. He was pleased with this answer. And then he turned to the middle daughter. He said, now, he said, you tell me, how much do you love your daddy the king? Oh, daddy, she said, well, I love you more than all of the gold, more than all of the silver, more than all the precious metals that you dig from the earth. Well, said the king, you love your daddy very much too. And he was pleased with the son, she felt self-important. And he turned to the youngest daughter, and she was maybe only about 14 or 15 years old. She had long golden hair and sparkling kind green eyes. And how much do you love your daddy the king? Oh daddy, she said, I love you more than salt. You love your daddy more than salt? Salt? Common salt? Salt from the earth that you walk upon? Common salt? If that's as much as you love me, then I don't love you either. And tomorrow morning, you can take your things and you can leave this castle because I don't want to see your face again. Well, the little girl was heartbroken. She cried. But 
But in the morning, as soon as the sun was in the sky, she gathered a few possessions together and wrapped them in a kerchief. And her two sisters, the princesses, well, they were near fellows. And they watched as she walked from the palace down the path. And the wee girl, well, she was terrified. She'd never, ever been on her own before. She usually had servants to accompany her. And she didn't know where she was going. But she followed her nose. And she walked down a pathway for many, many hours. And as she did so, the sun disappeared and the sky turned red. And she came to the edge of the forest. And the girl kept following the path, hoping it would lead her to somebody to care for her. A place of safety. And she was scared as she walked through the forest and the sun disappeared and the moon rose into the sky. When off in the distance, she could see smoke, pure white smoke, billowing into the starlit sky. And the forest was lit by a magical light coming from the house. And the girl moved closer, her heart beating, hoping there would be someone to offer her kindness. And she knocked on the door. And as the door opened, out came a little old woman. She had silver hair and sparkling green eyes. And she wore a pounds of blue dress and she smiled My dear, she said, oh, what on earth are you doing in the middle of the forest, all on your own at night time? Oh, grandmother, said the girl, my daddy's a king. I told him I loved him more than salt, and he said he never ever wants to see me again. Oh, your daddy's a king, said the old woman. Well, she said, I think you'd better come on. And the girl walked into the cottage and there was a huge roaring turf fire with a big black kettle hanging over the top of it. And at the side were two chairs and in one was curled up a big black cat. And the girl instantly walked over to the chair and she picked up the cat, gathered the cat into her arms and began to stroke it. And the cat began to purr and it crawled up into the curve of the girl's neck. And the old woman watched carefully and she lifted the kettle from the fire and she made the two of them a cup of tea. And she said, hmm, she said, my dear, I don't get many visitors here in the forest. And my cat, I have never ever seen my cat take to somebody like I've seen him take to you. And I know that that means you have a kind, loving heart. Now tell me, child, tell me your story. And well, the young princess told the old grandmother the same story I have told you. And she listened, and at the end of the story she said, Hmm, I think your daddy, the king, is needing to be taught a lesson. And so it was. The girl stayed with the old woman and the cat in the cottage and she taught her many, many things and of the magical properties of the herb, of all the things in nature and they lived very happily. But back at the castle, the king wasn't so happy because his servant brought him his favourite meal of pork and when the king took a mouthful, well, I spat it out on the floor. Man, he said, that meat's disgusting. It has no salt. Bring me salt! And a quivering servant came in through the room, shaking and shuddering. Your Majesty, he said, Your Majesty, we have no salt. No salt, said the king. How can I enjoy my meat? How can I enjoy my meal with no salt? Go and get me salt. Oh, but Your Majesty, said the servant quivering, oh, we've looked everywhere, we've looked at every corner of the kingdom, we've had men in. Your Majesty, there is no salt was beside himself. How could he enjoy his food? How could he enjoy meat with no salt? He sent soldiers on horseback to every corner of his kingdom to find salt. But not a 
single grain was found. Well, the three princesses, they were completely happy eating wheat cake. But the king needed salt. Now, the old woman, really secretly, she was a witch. And when she'd heard about the king banishing his daughter, she had put a spell on the kingdom that for a whole radius of a hundred miles around the castle, any single grain of salt would dissolve. And that's what had been happening. And one day the old woman called the girl and she said, Oh my dear, she said, tomorrow I'm going to be terrible sad. Oh, why will you be sad tomorrow, grandmother, said the girl. Oh, she said, because tomorrow you will leave me and you will go back to the king. Oh, but she said, I can't go back, grandmother. She said, my father, my dad, the king, he said he never wanted to see me again because my sisters love him more than diamonds and sapphires and rubies and emeralds and gold and silver and... Oh, said the old woman, I think your daddy the king will be very pleased to see you. Now, she said, wait there. And the old woman went into a room at the back of the croft, at the back of the cottage, and when she came out, she had a pair of scissors. And she chopped off all of the princess's long golden hair until it fell in a pile around her. And then she took the scissors and she chopped all around the girl's dress. And then she took the girl's shoes off and she walked over to the fireplace, picked up a handful of thick black soot. And she rubbed it all over the girl's face and over her neck and her chest and her arms and her hands until she looked like a little beggar girl, completely unrecognisable as the princess who stood there a moment before. And then the old woman went and on the top of an old French dresser, an old shelf in the kitchen, she took a bag which was filled with salt. And she put it in the hands of the princess and she said, Now, she said, my dear, you must go to the castle and when you get there, you must tell them you want to see the king. Tell them you've bought a present. Tell them you've bought him salt. Well, the young girl was sad to say goodbye to the old grandmother and she hugged her and kissed her and as she left, she said, Grandmother, she said, I won't forget you. Ah, said the old woman, you will be queen and you will remember me, my child. And with that, the girl followed the same path that had taken her to the old woman's house. And she walked all day and she walked all night till she came to the castle. She walked up to the arched oak doorway and she banged on the door. And when it creaked open, there stood the palace guard. He looked down at the little girl there, black covered in soot, rags bare feet. And he said, well, he said, little beggar girl, how can I help you? Oh, she said, I would like to to see the king. Well, what would a little beggar girl like you be doing wanting to see the king? Oh, she said, I have bought the king a present. A present, said the guard. Well, what sort of present could a little beggar girl, a little maid like you have for the king? Do you not know the king? We, he has gold and silver and diamonds and emeralds. What could you possibly have that he would want? Oh, said the little girl. I have brought the king some salt. Well, as soon as the guard heard the word salt, he couldn't get her into the castle quick enough, and he shouted to people, This wee girl, she's got the king some salt! Well, the door of the throne room opened, and there sat the king in his throne. And when he saw this little beggar girl with soot all over her face and her hair short like a boy's, he didn't recognise her at all for a second. He said, come here, he said, little girl, come here, he said. Now, he said, nobody's hurt you, have they? Oh, no, your majesty. Oh, because they'd have me to answer to. Oh, tell me, he said, little girl, what is it that you want to ask of your king? Oh, your majesty, said the little girl, I have bought you a present. You bought me a present? Well, he said, 
What could you possibly have brought me? He said, I, I have everything. I have diamonds and sapphires and rubies. Oh, she said, I have bought you some salt. You bought me salt, said the king. And the girl held out the bag of salt. And the king quickly unwrapped it and he took his fingers and he dipped it in. Oh, he was so happy. Salt, he said, the greatest thing in the world. I love salt, the greatest thing in the world. Now tell me, little girl, what is it that you would like in return? You may ask anything of your king and your reward will be granted. But the little girl just looked and she said, Daddy, I don't want anything because I love you more than salt. And the king tears began to roll down his cheeks as he looked into the eyes, the big green eyes of this little girl and saw that this indeed was his daughter. And when he did finally die in old age, he went to join his queen in heaven and the youngest daughter did indeed become queen and she ruled after him with wisdom and with kindness and the old woman the old grandmother the old witch and her black cat would often visit